We're about 40 miles or so east of Amarillo, Texas, and we're traveling west on Interstate 40. We're on our way to see the largest cross in Texas and one of the largest cross in the hemisphere. But first, before we get to the cross, in Groom, Texas is the Leaning Water Tower. Now the water tower was put up years ago on Old 66 Highway. It was to advertise the Britain truck stop and restaurant. Now the water tower was actually designed by Mr. Britton to lean and look as though it was falling. The old truck stop, of course, was destroyed by fire long ago. But you can still see where off the highway where it used to be from interstate. And you can also see now the cross in the distance. Some say that you can actually see this cross 20 miles away because the land is so flat. We're going to go up here and we're going to pull into the parking lot. Now they say that this cross stands 190 feet tall. And that's about, that's about 19 stories. It weighs 1,250 tons. That's two and a half million pounds to me and you. Now they also have here a replica of the 13 stations of the cross. Now the first station is Jesus standing before Pontius Pilate, with Pilate asking the religious leaders in the crowd, why, what evil hath he done? Pilate called for water and washed his hands and declared, I am innocent of the blood of this just man. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Matthew chapter 27 verse 24 and 25. Now, I've been here to this cross before and I've looked at this and I've always left with a question. And the question in my mind is this, why does the 13 stations of the cross start with Pontius Pilate? and not with the true guilty party, Caiaphas, the high priest, and the other religious leaders. Now I say this because in Matthew, the 26th chapter, verse 3, Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas, and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. Matthew 27, verse 12. And when he was accused of the high priest and elders, he answered nothing. Matthew 27, chapter, verse 1 and 2. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Matthew 27, chapter 15th verse. Now at the feast of the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore when they were granted 
gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they did deliver him. When he sat down on the judgment seat, his wife come unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with this just man? For I have suffered of many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. Now Pilate's problem was that his position as governor was an appointed position from Rome. He was a politician. And his chief job was to keep down trouble. And he knew that the religious leaders could stir up the people, and that's one thing he didn't need, was trouble. Now the second station, which I think should have been the third, but it's still the second one, Jesus carried his cross. Now the third station, Jesus falls the first time. Now the fourth station, Jesus meets his mother Mary. Now this is, this is something to me because this this had to be an extremely painful for both mother and son because both had shared the same burden all his life. The cloud of sin hanging over their heads. Friends, relatives, and others believed that Joseph and Mary had relations before they got married. This making Jesus a bastard and marry a sinner in the eyes of the others. Even Joseph thought so. That is, until the appearance of the angel dispelled all doubt by scaring him half to death. But the problem was, the angel didn't appear to all others. Therefore, Jesus could see how his mother was treated by self-righteous religious people and felt it was partly because of him. Do you remember the story of the prostitute that was caught in the act and they was bringing her to be stoned to death and they brought her before Christ? Now, do you ever wonder why he took her side against them? The reason was she reminded him of his mother because she could have easily been in that same situation. It's strange that on every occasion, Christ always took the side of the sinner and always condemned the accuser of the sinner. Now the fifth station Simon helps Jesus. Now Simon was coming in from the fields, it says, and they sort of pressed him into service by helping Christ carry the cross. Mark 15, verse 21. The sixth station, Veronica wipes away the tears from the face of Jesus. The seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. And the eighth station, Jesus comforts the woman of Jerusalem by saying, Don't weep for me, but weep for yourself and for your children. 
the knife station, Jesus falls the third time. The tent station. Jesus is, Jesus is stripped of his garments. The eleventh station. Jesus is nailed to the cross. The twelfth station, Jesus is crucified and dies on the cross. The thirteenth station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. Now you understand that all these sculptures here are in bronze and they're life size. And keep in mind now that no one actually knows what Jesus really looks like because the oldest painting of him was done hundreds of years after his death. And the truth is he looks nothing like the modern day images of him. So if you expect Jesus to come back, don't expect him to look the way he looks in these paintings and things. Now here we have the three crosses. In Matthew 27, verse 38 through 43, then there was two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they had passed by reviling him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priest Mocking him with the scribes and elders said, He saves others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross, and we'll believe him. He trusts in God, let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. Now the thief on the left in Luke 23rd chapter, 39 through 43 verse. And one of the malefactors, which were hanged, riled on him, saying, If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. Now to me, this is the amazing part, because this thief on the left was actually agreeing with the crowd on the ground that were killing him also. Now why would you do that? Why would you take the side of somebody who was killing you too? But he did. But of course the thief on the right, but the other answered rebuking him, saying, now this was to the thief on the left that the one on the right was saying, doth not thou fear God seeing thou art in the same condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And then he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest unto thy kingdom. And then Jesus answered something that would would be impossible for an imposter, imposter to answer under these circumstances. Why, when you're dying and no longer, it no longer serves any purpose to lie or pretend. The only reason that a person 
would make the statements that Jesus made to the one on his right would had to have been that Jesus completely believed what he was telling this man. There was no need any longer to pretend. They knew they were dying. And he said, Verily I say unto thee, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. Now this is a replica of the garden tomb where they took Jesus' body down from the cross and supposedly went and buried him or put him in the tomb. And they let you go inside. And now this is the real tomb, the garden tomb in Jerusalem. Now, I will say this, that this is one of the best rest stops, I think, in Texas. It's privately owned, but you're welcome to spend the night in a parking lot if you so desire, and the restrooms are excellent. 